Hi guys, we've got a really exciting new project today. It's called a lap book and it's something that until recently I didn't even know was a thing. But I do now and I'm really excited about it and I'm really excited about going through it with you and decorating it to the nth degree. Uh, the actual makings of the of the book, it's well, you'll see this one was um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. It doesn't matter what it is. The fact is, it's a book and it's got a hardcover. All I've done with the book is gut it. I've taken all the pages out of it. So be prepared after this is finished for a load of videos on what to do with pages. Um, so I gutted that one and then I found another book that was exactly the same dimensions as the front and back boards. Uh, cut them off another book and attached them like like this, either, either side of the original book. I actually attached mine with leather. I think that's perhaps a bit excessive. I just happen to have leather. So um, I bought some scrap leather some time ago and never used it. So this is a perfect thing to use it for. So um, we're going to start with this side and work our way through and it's at this stage that I must give full credit to a lady called Lorna Taylor from TaylorMade Journals as at this stage I'm actually emulating quite closely what she did with her beautiful beautiful lap book. Um, it, hers was just glorious. As we go through we'll um, invent our own things but actually at this stage it's quite close to Lorna's so I don't want to not give her credit where credit's due. Now you'll see that down down here, down the extreme left of all of the stuff, there's a piece of card with some ribbon down it. That's the next video, if you like. I just needed that there to get the bit we're doing now right. Um, and the next video shows you how to make this lovely, lovely little book. Uh, it's not this one. This one was just kind of practice that I'm going to give away as a random act of kindness. Um, see, it's really nice, but I don't want to see too much of it because we're going to be making one. So that's the next video. But for this video, what we're going to do is the remainder of that um, page. So I've cut out, I've, I've tried to keep this as short as I can and not make you sit through me inking every single uh, thing that's going on this page. But, you know, there will be things that, that happen. There just will be. It's me. Things always happen. And what's going on this page is that and that, which is going to go up under there, like so, and this. And when I flip them out, you'll be able to see what the subject of our journal is. That one, and this one, and a robin. So for those of you that know, you will know instantly, this is Edith Holden's Diary of an Edwardian, Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. It's just a beautiful book, and I actually have several copies, and I hoard them. I really do hoard them, but now is the time to get them out and use them. And underneath all of these, there's going to be four journaling cards. And I've cut out some words to go on them where appropriate, but they're just beautiful. Um, when daisies red and violets blue and cuckoo buds of yellow hue and ladies smock all silver white to paint the meadows with delight. It's just a beautiful book, it really is. And the horses plowing the ground, some blue tits, great tips, whatever, and I've just cut out their names and stuck them on. And this is a chaffinch's nest with the eggs in there. Lovely, beautiful images. The book is full of wonderful imagery, it really is. So first thing to do, however, is to get these stuck on this back page. Uh, ultimately, this will be stuck down. And that'll be the last thing to do today is to wait it up and leave it till tomorrow when it will be dry and we can move on to the to the next bit. It's all exciting, folks. Right, so this is the bit that goes on the bottom. And 
what I've done is I've taken some ordinary sellotape. Um, I think it's called something else in America, but this is sellotape. It's just a clear packing tape. It's used fairly ubiquitously. Uh, it's a bit like vacuum cleaners are called hoovers, all sorts of tapes called sellotape. Um, but this is actually sellotape, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be. I want it because I want the strength of it. It's, um, it's quite a strong tape. And I want more than one piece of it. I want two. So what I've done is I've unrolled some, put it down here, and then unrolled some more and stuck it, sticky sides together. So I've got double thickness and no sticky side. So let's attach it. And we're going to attach it to the inside of here and the outside, the back side, if you like, of that um, our back piece of paper and then when that's stuck down and whatever I'm going to come along with some washi tape and make it all pretty that's the theory right so we need to get these obviously still some little bits of stickiness left there we need to get make sure that you've got your paper the right way up because it's really easy and I've done it before uh, where you look at it all and you think oh yeah great but the paper's the wrong way up so We'll not be doing that today if we can avoid it. But, you know, these things happen. And actually, they have an alarming habit of happening to me, um, which I could do without. <gasps> so because this has got no sticky on it, we've got to make this sticky, um, this part sticky. It's going on the inside here and the back side there. So in order to make that sticky, I'm just going to use my snail glue. So I'm safest with this <laughs> because um, other glues have been known to go really splodgy on me. So let's just make sure once again that mm, that's the right way up of the paper. This is going here. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. So that's snail glue all the way along there. I've just got a tiny little bit here that I want to cut off. It's just gone over and it's just going to annoy me. There we are. So just stick the, the double sellotape, as it were, onto the snail glue. And cut that off flush with the end of your pocket. And that's going to go onto the back of there like that. And eventually, when it's all done, this whole piece will be sewn around. So it's going to have that protection as well. But up for the moment, I'm just going to stick that on with snail glue, um, which is ample enough to hold it in place until we get the until we get it sewn. It just would be incredibly difficult to uh, to sew this with all the pieces dropping off everywhere um in fact I don't, well i don't think i could do it anyway so once again let's just check that's going the right way up that's going there like that so that needs to go on the back and you need to leave just a little bit of room so it's got enough room to flap over oh it's not in the middle Oh, quick, quick, take this off. I haven't measured it properly. By, well, measured it by my eye, and my eye's obviously not, not measuring accurately today. Let's just look at that again. I think that's pretty much central. Leave a little gap. Let's stick that down again. I think that's okay. Got a bit here that's flapped over and I think it's going to create more of a nuisance so I'm just going to cut it off. There we are, let's have a look. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, that folds over nicely. And we're in the middle. Yay! Not so bad. Right, what we don't want is to look at this tape because it's it does a cracking job. It's really strong, but we don't want to look at it because it's ugly, basically, folks. It's 
I hate to say it. I don't, I don't mean for it to feel bad in any way, but it is ugly. So I have been out this morning and I have bought some Tim Holtz. Um, well, I would call it washi tape. I don't think he does call it washi tape. He calls it something else. He calls it design tape. So um, I've got some Tim Holtz design tape. And I bought this pack because they had greens in them. And I think... Well, I could probably get away with any of them, to be honest. But I think this one will go over onto the back page and look quite nice. I've never used Tim Holtz design tapes before, so I don't know if they're sticky or not sticky. Um, some washies are just awful. They're, they've got no stick to them at all. And some are sticky, sticky, sticky. So we'll see what this one's like. If it's not really sticky, this has got an upside and a downside. Um, put it on that way. So what you really want to do is cover, I'm just going to cut the end off where I've picked it. It's not square anymore. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. Could not possibly have been important. You really want to make sure that you cover the solar tape. That's the important bit. So there we are. I think that's covered and it looks nice. And you can't see the solar tape anymore, which is the object of the exercise. I'm going to have to get my little scissors out and get in there, trim that out. I've sewn around all my things with uh, black zigzag, some of black straight stitch, and I've left the tails. Now, those of you that know me will know that that is not like something that I would normally do. I'm normally incredibly precise about everything, really tidy, measure everything. Um, but I've sort of given myself permission to let myself go a little bit with this. <laughs> so we'll see where that leads to. So just I'm going to take my bone folder and just crease along that sellotape. It's plastic, so it's not going to really take a crease. I just want to give it the idea that that's where it wants to go. That's fine. It's going to be held in place anyway, and then it'll open up. And there we are. I mean, that's the general sort of gist of, of the whole thing, really. So it's not it's not tricky. Um, i put this one on next. This has already got its sellotape on from an attempt I made earlier <laughs> and got wrong. If I'm being honest with you, I got it wrong. Um, what I've learned. So, this needs to go on there and it needs to be in the same place as that one, which is about there, I think. So, let's just turn that over and make some marks. Okay, so I've got my cellar tape on. I just need to put some a uh, snail on there and stick that on. Same as we did for the other one, exactly the same. It's the next one that's just a bit different. Sorry guys, I'm left-handed and I, I can't see, I can't see right-handedly. Okay, so let's just make sure of what we're doing. That's going that way, right. You know, you're much better off to check twice or three times or four times until you really feel comfortable with what you're doing. Because I was rushing on earlier and honestly, I just made a right hash of it. A right hash. So there we are, that's that on. And that folds down nicely there. And it's in alignment with that one. It's at this stage, if you've really got, you know, a tiny little bit of alignment problems, you can actually rectify it because when you put the washi on, you can pull it to where you really, really want it to be. But I, oh, I think we're all right there. I think that's okay. I'm going to use the same washi because it's the sort of thickest of the ones that, are, that I've got available to me. Remember, it's the sellotape that you need to be covering.
take it to the end. I mean, this is very, very transparent, this tape, but it really doesn't matter because um, it's only the sellotape that we want to be covering. We're not trying to cover um, anything else. And you can see perfectly well there's no sellotape. No sellotape to be seen here. Move along. There is just a little bit, however, sticking out there, which will annoy me forever and a day if I leave it. So it's coming off. It's coming off. Right, so the next bit is this one. This needs to go in line exactly with that one. Um, so there, and I like that position there. So I'm going to draw a line along here. This is where it's going to go. And what we're going to do is, what we are going to do is, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to take a piece of sellotape, not, not the double stuff that I've already made, just ordinary sellotape. If I had any thinner stuff, I'd use it, um, but this is actually, this is all I've got, so I'll have to use the, this width. So I'll cut it there, that's longer than I need. Um, <clears throat> I should have marked, let's just stick that there. I should have marked where my ends were, shouldn't I? That would have been a much more sensible thing to do. I hope you're all staying safe, guys. This this is really worrying times. I, I I've never known anything like this before. It it it's awful times. So stay safe. Is that straight in there? Is that straight there? Yeah, I believe it is. So I'm just going to put a, a line there at the end and a line there at the end. Right. So on the top, the bit that's facing you, you want a bit of sellotape. And you really don't want masses going over onto your flip, flip, flap, flop. And I'm just going to cut a bit of that width away. It's too wide for what we need. It'll be okay. So I'm going to make sure that I get it to the end and on that line. No, really, it's all going. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it's all going well. Because you know what's going to happen, don't you? It's all going to go wrong. So just use your bone folder and get right in there. And make sure you've pressed that down thoroughly. And then on the other side, you can either put another bit of sellotape if you want, or you can just trust in the washi and the sewing machine. Because I'm sewing this, all the glue on my fingers from when I got it wrong before because the glue bottle exploded. <laughs> I was videoing it. I'm not putting it out. No. It, uh, the glue is... Just... <laughs> anyway, that's that. So this looks like it just needs to be encouraged to go to there. So when I put the washi down, what I was going to say to you is I'm just going to use washi um, because I'm going to sew it. So it you know, it, it, it's not going to need any more support than that. Um, this is a different one. Shall I use it? No, I'll use the same one. Let's keep, let's keep the same thing throughout. So that just goes over to the end there. Along here. Put it off flush with the end of your thing. I must say, I think if you were buying this Tim Holtz uh, version of washi and you wanted it to cover anything up, you might be a bit disappointed with it. But 
I don't, so I'm all right. Is that tip wide enough? No, you know, I think I'm going to have to use the wider one. Well, that's no harm, is it? It's all right. Bit of difference. Bit of difference is sometimes quite nice, isn't it? This is the widest one that was in the pack. I do know that he does some like super wide stuff, sort of four inch wide stuff. I just keep putting all the um, the remnants on my chest. So let's get that nice and level with that bit there. I'm not quite covering my sellotape there. That's it. It's along to this end. Yeah, that's covering everything that it should cover. That's very good. Yeah, that's lovely. So once again, just with your bone folder, just make sure you've got it stuck down nicely. This is actually embossed paper, which isn't uh, helping the cores much, but it does look nice. So let's just check that we're square. We're all right. Look at that, it's lovely. What's wrong with that? It's really nice. So what I'm going to do now is do some sewing. And I am going to sew right the way around the inside part of this, as it were, and along here and along here. And then I think that we're done. So bear with me while I sew. Um, and I'll be back to you very soon. So here we are. I've sewn all the way around the, the back part, as you can see. And I've sewn the washi tape on here, which had the solid tape under it. And the washi tape here, which didn't have any sellotape, but it's now been firmed up by this stitching. So there we are. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Need some ends chopped off. I wanted to keep some raggedy ends, but there is a there is a limit. Down at this corner. Got two off one length and the rest another length, but longer. So there we are. It looks lovely. Looks really nice. So the next thing to do is to stick it in the book, and I'll stick it in the book. Oh, it needs a bit of glue on it. I'll stick it in the book before I put the uh, tie, the string on that ties it. Which bit was it? This bit. So I'm going to stick it in with. Let's just see if that to stick down. Where's my book here? Oh, doesn't that look nice? It looks lovely. Looks really nice. I think. Hope you agree. There we are. Of course, they'll have they'll have the journaling card, which I'm also going to stamp on before they go in, so they'll be in there. That'll all be secured down. So, right, glue. Well, I think I'll put the glue on the on the boot because it's. Honestly, how many times do you have to clean your desk before you actually have enough room to work? Is, is it everybody like me that you end up working in, in a section this size and then everywhere around you is just a complete and utter mess? No, maybe it's just me. I don't know. 
But I always seem to need to have so much stuff out. <laughs> right, so I've got this. I've got Aileen's original tacky. Or I've got this fast grab tacky glue. Or, <laughs> that's not all, I've also got turbo tacky. Turbo tacky. I think I'll go for turbo tacky. Based on nothing. Based on nothing, guys. I'm really not an aficionado of glues. I do wish I knew a bit more about them. I don't want to go too much to the edge because it's just going to come splotching out, but I do want it to be stuck on the edge as well. You can always go in after, can't you, with a little bit of glue if it's not stuck completely on the edge. Let's just, let's just go for it. There we are. Look at that. That's a lot of glue. Right. Oh, yes, I've got it on myself. So making sure that we have it the right way up. I'm just going to start with the bottom here. And it needs to nestle up really close to that. This is why I put this in first. So we've got it exactly right. Wow. Hate to say this, guys, but for, you know, considering I've done this and the day that I was having, it's kind of looking, looking good. I love this paper. It's out of a pad called, uh, yeah, it's called The Promise. I know I'm in the middle of sticking something, but I just want to show you this before I forget. It's called The Promise, and it's, I don't know who it's by. Um, but it's they're really lovely papers, really, really nice. So back to sticking. I just wanted to share that with you in case you really like the papers too. I got it from Hobbycraft or the range. No, it was in Hobbycraft. Last time I was there, it was in there. So that's stuck down pretty darn good. Let's just get our sticky's friend out. The... Uh, the Brea. I couldn't even remember his name. Sorry, Mr. Brea. Forgot your name. There we go. Let's make sure we've got that right. And we'll just Brea him too. Ah, oh, just got a little bit of seepage here. I'm not surprised the amount of glue that I put on that I haven't got like masses. There we go. And you use your little, little handy little coot. A little bit of seepage there. But not massive. Not massive amounts at all. It dries clear, so that's one good thing. And, yeah, looks okay. Looks good. Looks nice inside. Once these are in, it'll look just the job. And then it'll be tied down, ready for somebody to come along and just flip open. So whilst I'm just... That's the end of the video, really. I'm just going to stamp these up. A little bit so they are ready to go in this is um pigment dovecraft pigment dye pigment ink that i'm using and i bought pigment ink because i believed it was the best for embossing but i've tried and i couldn't get it to emboss as nicely as i wanted it to so now the question is where i put my stamps so i've just got Two or three stamps here. Um, I don't know where they came from. I think originally they were free with a crafting magazine, possibly. Um, 
and I got them from a charity shop, something like that. So just inking that up. This is a brand new ink pad and it's kind of ridiculously juicy. I'm going to stamp onto uh, a, what I loosely call a stamping mat. Let me just get this on here and then I'll tell you about my stamping mat. Let's put that that way. <laughs> the stamp's here. There's nothing on here. And I'm going like that. There's nothing on that side. <laughs> oh my goodness me. It's not easy being me. It's really not. <laughs> I have difficulties. <laughs> oh dear, on a daily basis. Right, I've got it the right way around now. I'm just going to push down firmly. Not rocking it. I'm just pushing it down. Lifting it off. And look at that. It's lovely. <laughs> you get a much better stamp that way than if you <laughs> use the side with no stamp on. Uh, I just want something on there, so as when people turn the turn them over, they, ju they don't look completely naked as a jaybird. Um, I've got a butterfly here. Take this one off. Put the butterfly on the right way round. Yeah, this is a brand new ink pad, and it's kind of um, it's overly juicy to be honest. So I'm, I'm stumped. Stick. If your stamps, your uh, these stamps don't want to stick to your block, just put a bit of um, glue stick on them. That'll stick the suckers. There we are. I just stuck my hands all over that, so I'll just ink it again. I'm trying to be fairly cautious because, as I say, this is like a really juicy ink pad. So straight down. Some people find standing up is better. You get a more direct pressure. Um, what I find helps more than anything is this um, spongy pad. And I, I call it, I loosely call it my stamping pad because it's what I use for stamping. But actually what it was was a um, yoga mat <laughs> uh, that I bought from a charity shop and then cut up. So I've got loads of these. They're good for jelly plate printing and all sorts of stuff. Um, so I've certainly had my money's worth out of it. So it's just a little little flower. But just to keep the nature theme going, really, when you turn over and see something pretty on the back. Very nice. I'm just going to do another one up in that other top corner. So that looks pretty and then find something for this one. Which I thought I had something, but I haven't. Well, I could put the flowers on again, they were nice. Nobody's going to complain about them, I don't think. So as I say, once again, at the moment, we're cl very closely emulating the um, lap book that Claire Taylor made, uh, not Claire, um, Lorna Taylor. Hers is beautiful. Um, but I couldn't find a process video anywhere on what she'd done. So I'm just kind of um, making it up as I go along, really, and hoping that we get a really nice result. So that's all our uh, journaling cards stumped up. Looking very nice. And this probably now needs a bit of weight on it really to give it some even pressure uh, to dry. Oh, there's the other ones that I was looking for. Look, a fern and a flower. Oh well, we'll keep those under our belt for next time. And I might put them in actually when I'm weighting the thing down because these need to be, they've gone curly and they need to be straightened out. So I'll put all of that in there. I shall put some weights, like what I usually use for weight is 
a copy of a ream of copy of paper, a ream or two actually, and then a heavy book on top, and that's sufficient weight and it's quite even. It evens it all out. We'll put something like this stamping block over the top first. And if you're worried about the glue oozing out the sides, put an acetate down. Put a sheet of acetate down. And then if it, if the glue does ooze out the sides, um, it, won't, it won't stick. The acetate won't stick to where the glue's oozed out. That's the best bit of information that I can give you for today, guys. Uh, tomorrow or whenever it happens to be don't forget we're doing this groovy little book that's going to go in there and we're going to do it from start to finish and there is a lot <laughs> so get your big girls or boys pants on because that's what's coming up next part two is this uh, lovely little book so thanks for joining me today hope you enjoyed it uh, I think it's come out really rather well and I'll see you very soon Bye.